Hi there, my name is Richard Morris and I'm a consultant with the Cineject Professional Services Group. I'm also the architect of the Symphony Framework. This short video is going to demonstrate how using Symphony data objects you can enable field level focus from your view or your view model within a WPF application. Our first task is to create a new Visual Studio project. In Visual Studio we'll create a Synergy DE WPF application project and we'll call it Field Focus Example. This creates the basic project and our basic WPF application window. Once we've created the basic project, we can now define some environment variables. If we go to the Project Properties Environment Variables tab, we can begin to set the environment variables. Here we're setting the repository main and the repository text files so the development environment knows where our repository structures will be located. We're also going to code generate our data objects, so we need to set some code gen environment variables. Our first task then is to open a command window so we can build our data objects. To build a data object, you simply use the code gen code generator and specify the symphony underscore data template. Once it's created and back in Visual Studio, we can locate and add the code generated data object to our project. Because this is a Symfony framework application, we need to reference the Symfony assemblies, and the location of these will depend on how you've installed the Symfony framework. We should now be able to build our application and see it's built successfully. Our next task is to create the view model. The view model exposes the data objects to the view. So in Visual Studio, we'll create a new item of class type and call it vm.dbc. The first thing to do inside our view model is to import the required Symfony namespaces, in this instance, Symfony Conductor. And now to expose our data object, we need to create a backing field, we'll call it mpart, of type part underscore data, which is our code generated data object. And then using the property snippet, we'll create a property called part, again of type part underscore data, and we'll expose the backing field M part. And that's all we need to do to expose our data objects through the view model. Now we'll create a constructor using the CTOG snippet, and in the constructor we'll simply create an instance of the M part private backing field of a new part underscore data, data object. Now we have our view model, we simply need to data bind it to our view. So for our main window, we'll create a loaded event handler in the code behind. And then in this code behind, we'll simply assign a new instance of the view model to the data context of the view. Moving back to the view model, we're going to create a command that we can bind to a button on the view. First of all, we'll need to import the Symphony Conductor commands namespace. And then we're going to create a private backing field. We'll call it mdo focus. And it'll be of type generic command. Generic command is part of the Symphony Conductor commands namespace. And it allows you to do data binding between buttons and properties within your view model. So we'll call the property using the property snippet do focus, again of type generic command, and we'll expose the backing field m do focus. The property is going to be read only, so we don't need the set logic, so we can remove those lines of code. And when something gets this property, first thing we're going to do is test that it's not null. And if it is null, we're going to create an instance of it. So we'll create a simple instance of a generic command and we pass the name of the command to the generic command constructor. We're then going to bind an event handler such that when this command is executed the event handler will be fired and our code will be executed. We do this by defining the event command executed to a local or private method we'll call it do focus underscore event. 
So below the property, we'll create a private method called do focus underscore event, and it returns void. The event handler requires two arguments, a sender argument of type object and a parameter argument of type string. And we'll see how these are used shortly. Inside the event handler, the param argument is going to indicate to us which button has been pressed. And we'll see that in the view code that we write in a moment. So we're going to create, use the using statement and test the param.to string value. And the string is going to be id for the part id field, which indicates that we want to set focus to that field. So we simply set the id is focused field to true in the m part data object. If the field is group ID, we want to set, similarly set the group ID is focus field to true. And the final, final field we're going to test for is the supplier ID. These are the three fields we're going to put on our view that we're going to be able to give focus to. So similarly as the other two, we simply set the supplier ID is focus to true. Now we can move to our view. Our view is our main window 1.xaml. We'll move into XAML view. To define the layout, we're going to create some grid rows and some grid columns. The grid row definitions will create a row definition of height auto, which means it'll size to the containing controls. And we'll duplicate that for, for four rows. And we'll create some column definitions. The column definition will have a width of auto, which again sizes to the in internal control, and we'll have two columns. Now we can begin to build up our user interface. We'll first create a label in grid row zero and grid column zero, and give it some content of ID. We'll then create a second label which is going to reference the group ID with the content of group ID. And that'll be on the row underneath, specified by the grid row one. And then we'll create a third label for the supplier ID. Again, underneath the previous grid row. Before we can start referencing Synergy data types in our XAML, we need to be able to convert them. To do this, we'll use the Symfony Conductor Converter namespace, which contains a number of converter classes. To do this, we'll create an XML namespace, call it Converter, and reference the Symfony Conductor Converters namespace in the assembly Symfony Conductor. Then within the window, we'll create a Windows resource, and we'll reference the Converter Synergy Alpha Converter is the only one we need. And we'll give it a local key of Alpha Converter. Now in our XAML, we can create a text box. We're going to place this text box next to the ID label. So we'll give it a grid row of 0 and a grid column of 1. We'll give it a margin of 5 and we'll give it a text box width of 50. And then we give it a name. We'll call the name ID. We'll reference this name late further when we define a setter for this text box. We're then going to data bind the text property to our data object called part exposed through our view model and the ID property. Then we use the converter, which we declared above, which was called alpha converter. That converts our Synergy Alpha types to native string types. For the text box style, we're then going to create a style and some style triggers. The trigger is going to be a data trigger. The binding for the data trigger is going to be the part field is focused. So in this example, ID is the field or property is focused. And we're going to check against the value of this field being true.
If the value is true, we're going to create a setter which will set the property named focus manager dot focused element and we'll set that value to true. Now we'll repeat the above steps for the two remaining fields, the group ID and the supplier ID, simply changing the field references to group ID. And now we're going to add a stack panel with some buttons at the bottom of our view, so we can actually click on a button to tell it which field to take focus. We'll put the stack panel at the bottom, which was the fourth row, so grid row three, grid column zero, and we can column span the two columns so it takes up the whole width of the screen. Inside the stack panel then we'll create a button. We can give it a margin of 5. And we can give it a content of ID. So that'll indicate to the user to press it and the focus will move to the ID field. Now we go into data bind to our do focus property that we exposed of that generic command in our view model. And then we can specify the command parameter. This is the parameter that gets passed to the event handler that we were using in the using statement. We'll repeat this for a, a second button. The content this time will be for group ID. We'll bind to the same command. But with a different command parameter. So a command parameter value of group ID. And finally, we'll add a third button so we can put focus on the supplier ID field. And again, we'll data bind to the same command, the do focus property exposed through the view model. But this time, the command parameter, which will be passed to the event handler, will be supplier ID. All that remains now is for us to build and run the application. Once the window runs up, you'll see that we can click the buttons and focus moves to the appropriate field. And of course we can enter information in before, during or after clicking the field focus buttons. As you can see, using Symfony data objects and the properties it exposes, it's very simple to set focus within a field within the view of your application. And from the view model, it's simply a case of setting the appropriate is focused property. The Symfony framework is written in Synergy.net and is available as an open source project on the Coplex site. The Symfony framework is designed to assist Synergy developers to enhance their existing and future applications. Thank you for watching.